Advisor Peter Schiff has been called the voice of gloom. He predicted the U.S. housing bust back in 2006. Also, he predicted the collapse of financials, banks and investment banks, the decline of U.S. stocks, and the decline of the dollar. Of course, the dollar's been up for the past couple months. But what, what happens when all your dire economic predictions make you become part of the story. That's what happened to Peter Schiff, who now joins me from Stanford, Connecticut. And for an alternate view, Toby Smith of ChangeWave Research, joining us from Washington, D.C. So, Peter, Peter, you were away in, where was it, Saudi Arabia or some, one of the uh, Arab Emirates, right? Well, I was in the Emirates as well as Saudi Arabia. Okay, yeah. you, were, you were out of the country, and this, these series, actually, of attacks against you started to appear on the Internet. Eventually, they got so fierce that an article was written about it in the Wall Street Journal late last week. Uh, what were these attacks about from your perspective? Yeah, well, first of all, I, Europe Pacific Capital is a brokerage firm, and I'm a stockbroker, so I don't manage any money. There's no funds here. There's no discretionary accounts. I have over 10,000 accounts. They're, they're all unique. I mean, some people started with me 10 years ago. Some people started with me yesterday. Some people have small accounts. Some people have large accounts. People have different objectives. What happened is somebody on the Internet, you know, gets a hold of an account where somebody came, come, came in right near the peak of the market in 2008, uh, near the low in the dollar, uh, bought a lot of resource stocks. And, you know, those are the sectors that got hit. So the guy's account is down pretty good. And they're trying to draw inferences uh, between all of my accounts, trying to say I manage this guy's account, and this is how poor the performance was. Well, it was, was. more I mean, than that. Hold on, Peter. It was, it was actually more than that. That's part of it. But another part was uh, they, were, they were trying to discount a lot of what you were saying on the dollar, on, yeah, on what's going to happen in the future in America, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, they're trying to find a way to discredit me by saying, look, you know, people that followed my investment advice in 2008 lost money. Well, I mean, pretty much people who followed anybody's investment advice in 2008 lost money. I mean, but the bottom line is if you look at all my accounts, which I really can't do because I don't manage them, but even in the Wall Street Journal story, one of the accounts that they mentioned as being down you know, outperform the U.S. market. But, of course, they're not giving me any credit at all for all the money that we had in gold. We have a lot of money in gold for our clients, and none of that is in their statements because it's owned in separate accounts. But a guy might have had 50 percent of his portfolio in gold and 50 percent in stocks, and they're looking at the half that went down, and they're not looking at the half that went right. up. So is but, this, is, according to you, is this just professional jealousy, or is there anything to this when you look at your whole record? Well, you know, look, I mean, look at, look at Berkshire Hathaway. Berkshire Hathaway's stock has dropped 40% in the last 13 months. Right. The Wall Street Journal isn't saying that Warren Buffett made mincemeat out of his clients. I mean, my clients in general, <laughs> you know, aren't, aren't doing as bad. Yeah, but and, of course, we had some great years uh, for seven years that they're not talking about. But the main thing that happened that undermined a lot of my strategy, which was buying foreign stocks, was that the U.S. dollar rallied significantly instead of declining, which is what I anticipated would have happened. Now, I think the rally in the dollar is phony. I don't think it's going to last. I think it's going to collapse. And I think a lot of the losses that many of my clients have in their accounts now are going to be replaced by profits. In the by meantime, the way, how so? we're getting a how, lot of how dividends. Do the, how, do you, how do your clients uh, make money on a, on a weakened dollar? Do they, do they bet against it or what? Well, you know, m half of the declines that we have in our foreign stocks are strictly a relation of the exchange rate. If the U.S. dollar is going up, right. then st foreign stocks are losing value. But when that reverses, the foreign stocks gain that value back. In the meantime, the dividends that we're getting, and our, our stocks that we're buying pay huge dividends. The dividends are coming in and in currencies that will be more valuable, okay. so All that right. helps. Let me ask Toby. Now, Toby, I, I, here's the article from the Wall Street Journal. Frankly, a lot of the, sure. the web stories uh, seemed a little, you know, I can understand the professional jealousy charge against some of them, but uh, from the Wall Street Journal article, here's one guy, uh, Richard DiGennaro, who's put $100,000 into uh, uh, Euro-Pacific account. Recently, he lost a lot of it, 63%. There's another guy, Brian Kohlberg. Uh, put 70000 in a Euro-Pacific account, his investment has shrunk to $25,000. So, but can't you pick individuals who join just at the wrong time, any account, to make your point? Isn't it, you know, trends over time that is important, to, Peter, to Peter's point? Well, I, I'm, I'm a little, you know, confused. I'm not certainly here to, to bash Peter. I, I think there's two uh, issues. One is, uh, Peter and I have appeared on television, you know, throughout the years, and, and one of the things that I believe, and I think is in fact has been truthful, is that if he was going to be right about the demise of, you know, uh, United States uh, economy, 
then the absolute wrong strategy would be to assume that China or Europe or other countries would not be similarly uh, consumed, number one. Number two, when you looked at the banks, for instance, of Europe, as we've done over the last couple of years, the banks in Europe are in worse shape than American banks are uh, because not only do they have the, all the crap that they bought from America, but they also have all the loans yeah. they've made to Europeans. Yeah. So I just well, don't think the strategy works, number one. Number yes. two, what, what, I'm, what I'm more concerned about is when Peter c comes on and says, hey, these guys have brokerage accounts, I don't manage their money, et cetera. Well, how do they buy the stocks, Peter? In other words, you give them no. some advice, right? And then they buy stocks. Well, right, who but buys the stocks? Do they do that Peter. or do no, you? When, when I don't manage who, who, who the money, okay, I, Toby, we understand. Go ahead. When Peter. I don't manage the money, I can't report on performance. I can't come out and say, "Here's how my accounts performed. Here's the percentages," because I'm not allowed to sure. say that, even if I can calculate it. But also, by not managing the money, I've had a buy and hold strategy. I'm a long-term buyer of value for dividends, kind of like a Warren Buffett. I'm not trying to hold myself out as a market timer. So even if I think the market's going to go down, I'm not going to necessarily tell but people Peter, to sell their stocks. Isn't no matter, even so, if that's true, uh, isn't investment always, doesn't it come down to a matter of timing? Well, not if you're buying stocks that are paying 8 or 10% dividends. Now, if I knew, if I knew in advance that the decline would be that large, then obviously I would say let's get out and come back in. But you never know that in advance. And, you know, you're mentioning about banks. I agree. I don't own a single bank. I didn't buy any foreign banks because I knew they were loaded up with U.S. debt. And my whole idea that the foreign markets would ultimately benefit was not that it was going to happen immediately. I'm investing for the long term. I'm investing for the way this is going to finally play out. And I think ultimately... Ultimately, the best thing that can happen to the global economy is that they stop propping up the American economy. And that is happening now. But the main on, problems that ahead, our creditors Toby. have is that they loaned us Peter, money. Yeah. Yeah, Peter, uh, remember, a, a big part of your f philosophy, as I have followed and, and heard over the year and read your book, et cetera, has been that the debasement of the American uh, dollar, the debasement of our, our credit society where we don't actually build anything, blah, blah, blah. You've been looking for a Dow. You used to use the number of 4,000 or 5,000. Are you still, is that still your ultimate end game? Well, my ultimate end game is for the Dow to be worth about one ounce of gold. And right now, the Dow is worth 8.7 ounces of gold. It continues to fall. It was at 43 ounces of gold when this bear market started in 2000. Right. And I think the Dow is falling down to near eight, 1, ounces of, one ounce of gold. It might not get to 4,000 nominally, because unfortunately, the government is creating so much inflation to artificially pump up this economy that prices might not okay. fall that Finally, much, hey guys, but the real values we, will. we got to wrap it up. But, Peter, I just got to ask, have, have clients pulled out as, oh, a, result, a, as a result of these, uh, these no. rumors, the articles, et cetera? No, no, not at all. I mean, we're still getting new clients. And, of course, our existing clients continue to add money to their accounts. I mean, many of our clients are happy well, that the stocks went down because they have plenty of money in cash to take advantage right, of quickly, the bargains. Quickly, Toby, quickly. Uh -huh. Well, David, you can tell Peter out there what we told you to do in January. And by the way, if you think the markets are going down, you don't have to be a timer. You can make investments that go up when the markets go down. I, I think there's other ways to play it than sitting there in losses for years and years. Right. But that's it's not going to be years and years, Toby. Diver the one thing we've, years heard, years. We, we've learned from Bernie Madoff is you've got to diversify. Even if you think one guy is enough to get you in a lot of places, uh, put your money in a lot of different places, places you trust. Peter, Toby, thank you very much. We'll see more of Toby in a minute. Coming